Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a linear spiral with the Polar Grid tool in Adobe Illustrator. In my last video, I went through the details of how to use the Polar Grid tool, and I'm not going to be going over all of that in this video, but I will leave a link to that tutorial at the end of this one, so you can go check that out next. In this video, I'm going to focus on showing you how to make that linear spiral, and then how to apply some different designs, which you see here on the artboard. So let's move to a blank document and get started. We find the Polar Grid tool on the left toolbar as long as we have the advanced setting chosen. If you only have one column of tools on your left toolbar, then you'll need to come up to Window, down to Toolbars, and click Advanced, because that's the only way you're going to be able to access the Polar Grid tool since it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut. Now we find the Polar Grid tool underneath the Line Segment tool, so I'm going to come over and press down with my mouse on the Line Segment tool. That's going to give me a flyout menu, and here's where I can choose the Polar Grid tool. Once I have the tool active, I'm going to click on the artboard, and that's going to open the Polar Grid Tool Options dialog box. For the size, I'm going to type in 4 inches for the width, tab down, and type in 4 inches for the height. Next, we're going to change the number of concentric dividers to 10. These are the circles that are going to be in the grid, and then I'll change the radial dividers to 0 and say OK. And here we have our polar grid. Next, I'm going to get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and I'm going to select just these top center anchors and make sure you get all the way to the center here. And I'm going to cut these with the keyboard shortcut Command X. And don't make the mistake of deleting them. You have to actually cut them so that Illustrator places a copy of the lines on your clipboard. Then we're going to paste them back in place using the keyboard shortcut Shift Command V. Now that they're in place, for the next step, I'm first going to make sure that I have my Smart Guides turned on. So I'll come up to View, and I do have Smart Guides turned on. You can also toggle those on and off with the keyboard shortcut Command-U. Next, I'll select these top half circles, and I'm going to hold down the Shift key and drag to the right until Smart Guides shows me that I'm intersecting with the lower half circles. Now click on the artboard to deselect all of those, and we're going to select some lines, and this time we are going to delete them. I'll start in the center. I'm going to hold down the Shift key so that I can select multiples. I'm going to skip the next line, click on here, skip a line, click, skip, click, skip, click, skip, and click. And I'll press the Delete key once, and then press it again to remove all of those anchors that were selected. Now we're going to do the same thing on the top, and we're going to select the lines that aren't connected to anything. So I'll start and select this one, hold down the Shift key, skip a line, click, skip, click, skip, click, skip, click, and skip. And I'll press the delete key once and press it again. Then I'm going to get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select all of these lines and I'm going to join them together. And I can do that by either coming up to object, down to path, and choosing join, or I can use the keyboard shortcut command J. And here's our linear spiral. Now I could have made this any size, and I could have even added a lot more concentric dividers. The important thing to remember is that you always have an even number so that it works out right. I'm going to move this design over to the left a little bit, and I'm going to make a copy. I'll hold down the Option key to make a copy, and I'm going to hold the Shift key down as I drag to the right, and that's just going to keep these right in the same line. And I'll first come over and click on the word Stroke, and I'm going to change the cap to a rounded cap, and then I'm going to get the Width tool, keyboard shortcut Shift W. I'll press down with my mouse on this last anchor here, and I'm going to just drag to the right a little bit, and I'll increase the width to whatever size I want, and then release my mouse. Now I have a spiral that's thick on the outside and thin on the inside. Now I could reverse that. Let's just undo that move, keyboard shortcut command Z. We still have the width tool active. I'm going to come to the center of the linear spiral and drag from the center out and make this center thicker, and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut 
Tet V and click on the artboard to deselect it. And I actually think I even like that better. I'm going to come back over and select our original spiral, hold down the Option key to make a copy and the Shift key to drag in this same vertical line. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make one more copy. I'll hold down the Option key for the copy and the Shift key to drag in a horizontal line. And we're going to just line this up with our spiral here. And in this example, we're going to be using the Type on a Path tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is type out some text. So I'll get the Type tool, keyboard shortcut T, and I'm going to just click on the artboard. But I'm going to change the size of the font to 23 points. And then I'm going to begin typing. And I'm just going to go through and type out the alphabet. Let's do the numbers too. Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'm going to make a copy of my ABCs, keyboard shortcut command C, and this is going to place them on my clipboard. Then I'll select the polar grid tool, come back over to the left toolbar, and right here where the type tool is, I'm going to press and hold down my mouse. This is going to give me a flyout menu, and I can choose type on a path tool. Now I'm going to start in the center and just click down with my mouse and Illustrator automatically puts in some placeholder text. But remember we have some text on our clipboard so I can paste it in using the keyboard shortcut command V and Illustrator replaces the placeholder text with the text from the clipboard. I'm going to keep pressing command V and pasting more of those letters onto the spiral until I have it filled up. And when I have it like I want it, I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V, and I'll click on the artboard to deselect the spiral. Now I'm going to select the text and delete it. And for the last example, we're first going to make a pattern brush. So I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and click on the artboard to open the ellipse dialog box. And we're going to make a very small circle. So I'll type in 0.2 inches for the width, tab down and type in 0.2 inches for the height, and say OK. Then I'll come over and click on the color fill icon, and I'm going to choose this blue color for the fill, and then we'll change the stroke color to this orange and increase the weight of the stroke to two points. Now I'm going to need to access the brushes panel. So I'll come up to Window, down to Brushes, click here, and I'm going to grab this tab and drag it over and dock it next to the Layers tab. My little circle's already selected, so I'll come down to the bottom of the panel and click on the New Brush icon, and that opens up the, the New Brush dialog box. We're going to click Pattern Brush and say OK, and Illustrator has created a pattern brush for us. Well, I'm not going to change any of these settings. I'm just going to say OK, and here we have our pattern brush, so I'll get the Selection tool keyboard shortcut V, click on our linear spiral, and then click on our new brush, and Illustrator applies it very nicely to our spiral. I'm going to select our ellipse and delete it, and we end up with some different designs that have been applied to our linear spiral. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you're already thinking of ways that you can use this spiral in some of your own projects. I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.